Let's look at how to build an app UI using AI coding agents. The coding agent can be that of Kesa, Winsafe, Alex, or GitHub Copilot. It doesn't matter which AI code editor you want to use. The concept of AI coding agents work in a similar way when you use Kesa, Winsafe, Alex, or GitHub Copilot. So in this example, we are going to create a UI for an iOS app. We can use Kesa or Winsafe. However, for an integrated Xcode experience, I'm going to use Alex. What you see on the left is a screenshot I took from the Steps app. And also, over here, we have a prompt. You have noticed the image on the right side of the screen is quite similar to the image you see on the left. I'm going to show you how to generate a UI on the right side of the screen using this prompt. That is a single prompt. We can create the same UI using an LLM in Kesa or WinSafe like Crowd 3.5 Sonnet or any of the OpenAI O1 models. However, using an AI coding agent in any of these tools, Kesa, Winsef, or Alex is much beneficial. This is because there is no need to add too much context. From the bottom left of the screen, you can see there is an agent settings and we have the option use agent and the option has been enabled. Once you enable the use agent option in Alex, you can add a prompt to generate your code without any context. So over here, you can enable the option. This feature is great because when you use an LLM like Crowd 3.5 Sonnet, you need to add a context. For example, over here, you can see we have a single prompt. So to add a context, we can bring the add sign and add a reference to files, code base, referencing the whole Apple documentation or referencing an individual page from the Apple documentation. However, once you use an agent, none of these references or context is important. So whenever you want to add a prompt without a context, it's good to use an AI coding agent instead of using an LLM in any of these AI coding editors. Since you don't need to specify too much context, when using an AI coding agent, that improves the result of the code generation a lot. For example, over here, you can see we have a single prompt. We can use this prompt along with an LLM like Crowd 3.5 Sonnet. However, we may need to add a chain prompt or follow-up prompt in order to create a UI on the right side of the screen. Also, from the Xcode project, you can see we have several files. All these files were generated using the single prompt you see here. As I said before, we can use an LLM for that. However, we need to enter several prompts in order to achieve that. So let's look at how you can use the image on the left along with this prompt to generate the UI you see on the right side of the screen as well as the following files. To get started with Alex, you should visit alexcode.app. So this tool works in a similar way like Kesa or Winsafe. It also has most of the features of Kesa. So you can use it to perform most of the things you can do in Kesa. However, you will be using it to write only Swift code. So in this example, we are going to use it to generate Swift UI code for the UI I showed in the beginning of the video. Once you download Alex and launch the app, you will have a UI similar to what you see on the left side of the screen. From the top, you can add a new chart. You can see your chart history. So in this example, I have already created a new chart and added this prompt. Also, when using Alex, you can upload an image to generate a Swift code from. So as you can see, I have added an image already. That is this screenshot I took from the Steps app. As I said before, we can build this same UI using an LLM like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. However, that will require too much context and also follow-up prompts in order to create the various sections of the screen. After adding the screenshot and running the prompt, this is the result I got. So let's go to the Xcode project. Over here, I'm going to delete one of the files and show you how to add it to the Xcode project when using Alex. If you use Alex, you get a seamless integration with Xcode. So over here, this is the response from the agent and this is the first file we got. We can copy the code and also if you like, you can go to the Xcode project and select a particular folder or group. Once you highlight a group, you can go back to Alex and add any of the files it will generate. Over here, I have already deleted this file, so let's add it back. 
by clicking add file you can see we now have it in the xcode project because initially i selected the screens folder so all these remaining files are those you see over here we have the top bar view that is the one here and as i scroll down you can see we have the ring view that is this one so i added them in the same way to the xcode project by clicking add file so in this example it was able to generate all the necessary files and after adding them to the xcode project i didn't have any error at all after adding all the files to the xcode project you can then go ahead and modify the ui to how you want them to be so the man view is the last file that was generated by the agent so you have noticed here after generating all the file it also added this note let's go through the prompt and the generated files in the xcode project we want to create swift ui views using the attached image and all the various sections should be put together in this steps view dot swift if i go to the xcode project we have this steps view dot swift and over here you have noticed we have the individual views we have the ring view that is this file the graph view that is this file and the rest so we have all the individual parts of the ui and in this test view dot swift we compose them together the results view ring view settings view and the rest next i added this part to create the top items and place them in top bar view dot swift that is this file for the top bar view i also stated further to put the content in the toolbar using the swift ui's toolbar modifier then the segmented control consisting of day week and month should be in the top bar so if i go to the xcode project again you have seen here we have day week and month the content of week and month are not linked yet but you can just go ahead and link them because we have all the files we have week view and also month view the next thing i stated for the agent was to use sf symbols for all the icons so if we go back to the ui you have noticed we have all the sf symbols that were used in the image we have the settings icon share icon flame icon and the rest so in the xcode project we have all the icons as shown in the screenshot i then stated create the ring section in ring view dot swift so when we go back to the screenshot this is the ring section so i specify that should be in ring view dot swift then in the xcode project you have noticed here we have ring view dot swift and it added the exact content for the ring view over here we can go ahead and edit the content in any way we want for example we can change the active rank to maybe 0.5 for the rank start the next thing you can do is to also find all duplicated items for example the foreground color modifier we can just remove that because foreground color has been duplicated and over here since we have foreground color to be gray we can change this to foreground style and that will give the same color so anywhere you see foreground color you can change it to foreground style next i stated the graph section should be in graph view dot swift and that should be created using swift charts if we use the same prompt with an llm like cloud 3.5 sonnet and specify the swift charts this way we also need to provide the swift charts documentation as a context to be able to generate the code next the bottom section of the ui should be in tab bar view dot swift so in the xcode project you can see we have tab bar view dot swift then we have to make each tab bar item tappable and functional by linking each item to the corresponding screen with the content in settings view dot swift goals view dot swift workouts view dot swift and results view dot swift so we can move to the tab bar and cycle through any of the contents Let's go back to the original screenshot again and show you one more thing. Over here you have noticed the currently selected segmented item is the day view and also from the tab bar the one in focus is the status view. I specified that in the prompt as well. So this is that part. The currently selected tab bar item should be steps 
as seen in the image. So if we go to the Xcode project, you can see from the top view, we have the day segmented control as the active item. And also on the top bar, we have steps as the active item. All these many aspects were possible with a single prompt because we are using an AI coding agent. This is not a perfect interface. However, once you have all the content this way, you can go through each file and modify the content to suit your goal. For example, in this test view.swift, you have noticed we have spacing issue with the ring and the content below it, but that can be fixed easily. Also, for the rings below the ring view, we can increase the line width and increase the size of the badges. If I bring the main screenshot, you can see the badges are larger. So what we can do is to go ahead and modify the code to mimic the original screenshot. So over here, you can see we have the badge and the font size is eight. We can remove this completely so that we get a default font size. So this is much better than before. We can also increase the line width of the three circles. So this is how you can use coding agents in AI code editors like Kesa, Windsurf, or Alex to help build user interfaces faster.